Welcome to Tremendous Talk. We got the industry, tea, and the jokes. Actors, directors, musicians, and more. You're listening to Tremendous Talk. Hey, everyone. I'm Law. And I'm Ash, and this is a Tremendous Talk podcast. Join us as we guide you through the realms of Hollywood and beyond while we speak to industry professionals in the spotlight. So grab a boba tea and leave your shoes at the door. Welcome to Tremendous Tremendous Talk. Talk. Wow, Wow. it has been a long time since we've gotten to do that. It felt good. It (laughs) It felt good. It feels good. It feels good. Hey, everyone, my name is Law. If you're not familiar, I am a Filipino Indian uh, actor uh, and host and producer, and I'm just getting my bearings with the podcast world again, but I'm excited to be back. Dude, I'm happy you're back, too. And I am Ashley, also known Ooh. as Ash. I'm a Filipino-American actor, filmmaker, musician, and gush, gosh, gosh, darn, golly, <laughs> gee, willikers. I'm just happy to be here. That's, Dang nabbit. That's exactly my my feelings, too. Gosh, god, <laughs> goody, gosh, darn, gee, willikers. <laughs> Uh, it has been an interesting time. If you have been following the podcast, obviously we, we did put a, a small pause on on producing the podcast, even releasing episodes that we had because there was a lot of striking happening in our industry specifically all over the world. Let's be yeah. clear, but in our industry specifically. Um, and I think, you know, we we had the benefit of actually getting to have writers and have uh, filmmakers and actors speak to at least the WGA strike, which was the writer Writers Guild uh, striking. Um, obviously, their deal went through; it ratified. But in the in the process of that happening, SAG was also um, also joined the fight for their own rights and stuff. So, uh, yeah, how did the how was the strike for you and your end? <laughs> wow, what a weird question! To, how yeah. was the strike for you? I, yeah. Uh... Do you like that coffee? (laughs) Let's just go over some some quick facts. Yeah. So the WGA strike was May 2nd to September 27th, 2023, Mm -hmm. and it lasted for 148 days. The SAG strike, SAG AFTRA, lasted from July 14th to November 9th, 2023, and lasted for 118 days. And this is the first time this is the dual work stoppage of both unions. Mm. Um, This is the first time in 63 years that this has happened and it has shut down literally all of Hollywood, all of everything. And what is Hollywood goes so far beyond the scope of what we understand. It includes talk shows for writers. Mm. It includes literally anything that we put our faces on, like the podcast had to stop. For example, we Mm -hmm. couldn't do any sort of film or TV work. We just had to kind of like, it, I think for us in a weird way, and I don't want to make this disingenuous to anybody's COVID experience, but it felt like COVID, but more hardcore, like at least during COVID, I could do my monologues and like practice mm-hmm. things and put things online or whatever and like audition for stuff. This was, I think, the longest time I've ever gone with doing nothing. A lot of yeah. questioning going on. Yeah, sure. What am I doing? What am I worth? <laughs> I, I see I see the parallel between like kind of what lockdown felt like for, and this, at least from like uh, for me, from like a gig perspective, right, from like freelancing, uh, just because there was nothing. There was really nothing in, in like normal work. If you were looking for like just like, you know, I applied to McDonald's and In-N-Out and Starbucks and no one was really hiring. Uh, and I think they were also like, oh, this guy isn't like, you know, is not looking to be here forever? And so they pass up on me. I, it was just like a weird time. Uh, I will say, though, being out on the lines the few times that I got to go was an amazing energy. Uh, the community really came together. I loved seeing our Filipino actors bar caught out there repping and and like seeing all the different sects of 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 like, well, Asian actors. And like Latina actors and, you know, it's just it was so nice to like come together for a, a, the same cause, um, despite kind of the the negative aspects of why we were out there. You know what I mean? Um, but 100 plus days for both. That is rough. That is a long, long time. Those several months that people were not working uh, and just trying to survive. And I'm glad we're on the other end of it now. But. Um, you know, the SAG, the SAG uh, agreement just got ratified yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
And so I, I haven't gotten to take a look at it personally. I'm not in the union yet, but um, did you get to to read that at all? Uh, what, what, I haven't gotten it? to take a look at it. I've only seen a couple social posts, but from the consensus of things, I know that a lot of people aren't 100% pleased about things, mm -hmm. but I don't want to let that shape my own opinion. So I want to read the whole thing. I really yeah. want to like sit. That's why I think I want to do it during the weekend. I want to sit and really digest what's cool. going on and the agreements and stuff, because even though we aren't union, it still deeply affects us mm -hmm. and the industry as a whole, too. But man, that it's so much. And it also like affected the way I work and do my work as a publicist, yeah, too. And as totally. an actor, like it's so usually our worlds. So as a publicist and actor, my worlds often collide and it's usually chill. Like, you know, it's not like a big deal at all and it doesn't affect my work. But I had to be so like. I couldn't talk about my work at all. I had to, I felt so secretive. Like, I don't know. It just felt kind of icky. Like, mm -hmm. but our work with the, I got to do different work. So that was nice. I got to highlight authors instead of talking to celebrities and stars and filmmakers and stuff. So that was really cool too. But it was so interesting that we started the podcast. I think our like second interview was right when the WGA strike happened. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was interesting timing that it just all, fell in. I'm glad that we got as many episodes out as we did before yeah. we had to 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 pause things. Um, but you're absolutely right. It affected everything, like all my press journalism stuff, even the people that you were allowed to talk to, you know, it, it changed completely. Uh, on the plus side, I got to speak to more like below the line talent. Uh, I hate that term because it makes them sound lesser. But, you know, it's like getting to talk to the production designers of things and like, the the directors and producers, the people that get to see kind of the nitty gritty of it all is really wonderful because those conversations are usually really some of my favorite, you know, like just like the insights that you get. Um, that said, we do uh, we do have some episodes that we need to, we to do. release. Mm -hmm. um, and we I mean, we have we teased our guests so far? No. I don't think we've done anything with it. No. So we recorded some mm -hmm. really good stuff. I think the day before the strike happened, literally. I think literally, yeah, <laughs> literally the day before the strike happened, we got some stuff in the bank and we wanted to just stand in solidarity. So we didn't want to release any episodes when the strike happened. So these are two. We have two episodes right now in the can that literally we recorded the week of the strike and we just have with us. So a lot of the information is still very relevant. People are still doing the same things. Um, you can still watch the same shows and stuff, but we just wanted to have a disclaimer that this did take place in July. I think we recorded these yeah. in July mm -hmm. prior to the SAG strike starting. Yep. When, um, do we want to say who? Do we yeah, let's talk secret? about it. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> well, I think uh, I think. Our first one that we're going to release is probably Crit, right? Mm hmm Yeah, so Christian Fenene Schmidt. Um, if for those of you who don't know, Ash, you kind of introduced me to Crit because of his work in AAPI like representation. He is, I believe, the founder of Peak Pacifica. Am I wrong there? And they're doing amazing yeah. stuff. Like, even from when we talked to him, too, they're it's just been kind of skyrocketing. They're doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. I love getting all their emails from their newsletter and stuff. There's just been so many things that they're constantly doing for the community. And I'm just so grateful that we got the opportunity to speak with such like a community leader of that standard. So really, really, really exciting talk. We got, I think we cried during that episode. That was a deep one. He was, he was being very, very inspirational. Like it was emotional and you're absolutely right. Since, since we did that episode, like even though we didn't get to release it, it has been amazing to see kind of how his journey changed and progressed uh, along with the organization. They're not yeah. they're not slowing down. Uh, they no. you know, they're, they're definitely out there doing the work still. And, uh, you know, I respect it. I look forward to releasing that episode. And I hope you guys enjoy that conversation because it was a good one. It was a really good one. Yeah. And our second one that we have in the can, we're so excited that we got to talk to Vincent Rodriguez, the third. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful conversation um, since it was so relevant, though, because after we recorded that podcast episode during the strike, it was like, I don't know, I, I saw him every single day, mm -hmm. like just posting all this really, really, really positive content during the strike, keeping like people uplifted and feeling good. And it was just really nice to, to see and feel. But also too, his um his his show with love on Amazon is like a Christmassy show. It's during mm -hmm. Christmas time. I don't know. It just it all feels really good. So. Yeah. And and fun fact, I ran into Vinny 
out on the strike lines a lot a lot whenever i went out he seemed to be there um what a great energy i'm so excited to share what he had to say because while we were speaking so much about like the wja strike it it still carries over to kind of the sentiments that happened during the SAG strike. And he's yeah. just like infectious energy that, that episode, he just was, you could tell that guy's an entertainer. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like he was there to, to make our day and make your guys day. So be on the lookout for those episodes. We're going to try to get those out by the end of the year uh, for sure. Hell yeah. yeah. But while we're chatting about podcast episodes coming up, we wanted to update our audiences on some podcast restructuring that we're actually going to be doing. So as you know, um, this is kind of like a labor of love for us. And we do this just because we want to make sure our voices are being heard. We are in the conversation. We have a seat at the table. We're making sure that the AAPI diaspora, we're not just getting spotlight when people choose to give a spotlight to us. We want to actively be seeking out these stories and these conversations. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, um, we are restructuring. We're going to give you guys uh, probably a monthly long form episode every month. We're going to have, uh, you know, some exciting guests uh, and we're going to focus on that episode with bonus episodes thrown in. So stuff like what we're doing now, entertainment news, um, if there's like, you know, other creators that we can get on, I think more panels would be exciting, but just to kind of be more realistic about our workload and our bandwidth, because Ash and I are technically still working in the industry as professionals. <laughs> so, um, we're just going to try to do something that not only improves the quality of your experience, but our experience behind the scenes. I think Absolutely. And I think it's cool. Like it gives us a little more room to play. I'm excited totally. to see like the different things we can do. I'm just excited to kind of play with this and and see what the audience wants and what we want to give them and vice versa. And just, you know, it's going to be a good time. And to that point, if you're listening right now and you have some people that you'd like to see on the podcast or like concepts for shows that you'd love us to discuss or people that we could bring in. Let us know in the comments. Let us know in our DMs. You know, you could find us all over social media. We're excited for this next chapter. We're really grateful for our first chapter. But with, you know, the way that the industry had changed in the last few months, coming to the end of the year, I think we're excited to try something new and exciting in the new year. So heck thanks. Heck yeah. Heck and heck yeah. <laughs> Did you guys know that podcasts have a whole freaking team dedicated to it? Like, <laughs> we... <laughs> so we're actors. We work like a 40 hour week. We're like, yeah, let's do a podcast. And then we learned that like the major podcasts of the world, right? Like they have their own 40 hour workers working yeah. for them. But it's cool. Like, I don't know. I, I feel like being an artist in general is a lot of just trying it out, seeing what yeah. happens and then course correcting from there. And this is just one of those situations where like, yeah, we're, we're doing what works for us. We're doing what works for you. We want to give you the best that we can provide. And and yeah, we're just figuring it out. Yeah. So thanks for sticking along with us. And we hope that you continue to stay on the journey with us as we sort it all out because you're tremendous. We're all tre <laughs> we are tremendous. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that's about it as far as like um, housekeeping stuff, you know, like catching back up. But there's exciting stuff in the entertainment world. We get to talk about it again. Uh, Ash, uh, what, what are some of the things you're excited for coming down the pipeline? I feel old as hell, man. <laughs> old as hell. Wait, why? So, uh, mean Girls is coming out again? Yes, mean it is. Mean Girls came yes. out five years ago in my mind. <laughs> I... So uh, there's this like 2003. Wow, two that it is 2023. 2003 yeah. was a wonderful year for movies. I I whenever I hear about movies that came out, I'm like that came out in 2003. Great year for movies. But Mean Girls is coming out now, and like the same Tina Fey's in it. We got the yeah. same like coach principal. What is going on? It's so crazy. So I'm so excited. Yes, yeah, you are absolutely right. It's been about 20 years since the original Mean Girls. Uh, even even during the Christmas season, I don't know if you guys seen this or the Black Friday season during Thanksgiving, there were Mean Girls Walmart commercials where they brought back the original cast like Lindsay Lowe and Amanda, yeah. um, uh, Lacey Chabert, even Eddie Liu from CW's Kung Fu <laughs> was Gretchen Wiener's husband. Um, all that to say, this is based off of so after 
the success of Mean Girls the musical or Mean Girls the movie. Tina Fey developed Mean Girls the musical, which played on Broadway. I have seen that show twice, once in New York, once here in L.A. at the Pantages. I love that musical. The music is so good. It is so funny. It's it, and it's so Mean Girls, right? Now they're doing that thing where they're adapting the musical back into a movie, kind of like the color purple. <laughs> they just did that yeah. with the color purple, right? It was like a book and then a movie and then a play and now a, a movie of the play. You know, like it's an interesting pipeline. I feel like it won't be the last <laughs> uh, of its kind, but trust me. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to see Aoyili do. Uh, there's a song that Janice Ian sings in it, and it's so good. I cannot wait for her rendition of I'd Rather Be Me. We'll see. I'm Dude, excited. Dude, what the heck? I, I, yeah. Okay. I Janice is my like spirit animal, right? Ever totally. since the OG, and I cannot wait to see her do this. And yeah. all, oh my God, the pictures and the artwork and her whole outfit and aesthetic. I just. <laughs> yeah. And the girl playing Regina is actually the one from the broad the Broadway cast. What? So that's wh that's why it's like, you know, like it, let's be honest, no one looks like they're in high school in that movie. No, like let's be honest, they all look like adults. That said, there's a good reason for it because they found, you know, the right cast to to, to make it happen. Yes. I hope I hope somehow Lindsay Lohan and, you know, Rachel McAdams make like a cameo appearance, oh my but God. As a project, I'm very excited for it. For real, for real. <laughs> I just. Oh, fun fact. I used to live in New York and I want Mean Girls was happening while I lived in New York, too. Mm -hmm. And I, I kept on trying to get in. I just could not get in. Yeah. Darn yeah. TKTS. But <laughs> man, I'm stoked. That's such an interesting like movie, Broadway movie. <laughs> movie again. Yeah. Yeah. It's in it's super interesting. But, um, you know, like. Have you ever seen Waitress, the movie with like, um, oh my God, I'm Carrie Russell and Nathan Fillion. It's about this like woman who works at a pie shop and then she gets pregnant and all this stuff. They turned that into a musical. And then now I'm like, let's turn that into a movie <laughs> because the musical is so good, you know? So the music is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So I, I it's, I, it's an interesting era because I feel like there's a lot more musical movies coming out, which is, you know, I'm I'm not mad at it. I love I love Broadway stuff. So I'm excited for like Wicked and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's an interesting time. What, el what else are you excited for? What else is new? Well, I mean, on the opposite spectrum, too, I'm also interested, like we have so many adaptations of books and music mm -hmm. or whatever coming out. I'm just so curious about what original content is coming out, like what original, original movies, like brand new stories that we've never seen are coming out. So that's so interesting, too. But something that I've been doing lately. OK, so I made this goal for myself that I'm going to listen to more music. Ironically, as a musician, I don't listen to a lot of music. Like I don't sit there on my computer all day listening to songs. Mm -hmm. I have been obsessed with listening to a band called Fanny. F-A-N-N-Y. Yeah, dude. Okay. They are all female band. They're the first band in history, all female band to get a to sign for a four album recording studio contract in the 70s. And it's like a big flipping deal. And guess what? What? It's run by Filipinos. The bass player oh. and the guitar player, Filipino sisters that like lead the band. So cool, dude. Oh, that is awesome. So I, cool. Have I heard anything that they've they've written? Or I like, mean, possibly like, yeah. so they've gone on tour. I think they've been on tour or affiliated with like Bowie and all those people mm. in the seventies that were like really killing the scene and their sound really impressed people. And when I'm listening to all these songs, I'm like, I feel like I've heard this before, dude. Like, how have I, how have I not come across this? Like some of the major recording artists of the seventies and I love seventies totally. music. So, but check it out. It's very like, oof. It, it sounds like a Zeppelin or it, it feels very like 70s rock with a of hint of like blues and yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So amazing. So cool. What about you? Um, well, that, that brings up. Um, well, speaking of like documentaries and like music, I just watched something called The Stones and Brian Jones. Have you ever heard of that documentary? No, but that sounds like a cool band name. <laughs> it, it does. It is right. But um, it's it's the story of a man named Brian Jones, who's actually the founder of the Rolling Stones. What? And so 
I know you probably think of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards as like the people of the Rolling Stones, but they would have never come together had Brian Jones not existed. And it's there's a documentary out. Um, I got to talk to Nick. I believe his last name is Bloomfeld. He's a big documentary. He did, you know, he did the Biggie and Pac uh, documentary. He did the the Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love documentary. Um, but this one is specifically about Brian Jones and how he's like he got shunned by the band and kind of like fell into obscurity, fell into substance abuse, and now you know here in 2023, people don't even remember his name, but. You know, when people talk about the curse of 27 for musicians, like a lot of musicians die or end their life at that age, Brian Jones kind of kicked off that that trend. He was the first big major rock star to die within like the drug use era and rock and roll. And like, you know, there was a big memorial. But the fact is, I didn't know who he was until I watched it. And so that was a really interesting just this. Speaking of like music documentaries, that is something that came to mind while you were talking about like Fanny there. Yeah. Dude, it's interesting. I, yeah. My favorite genre, I think, of films are music documentaries. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to write this down. This is very exciting. Yeah. The Stones and Brian Jones. It's a cool name. It's a, it's a, it's a name. Um, but it's, it's so interesting because you get to see like Mick Jagger and Keith Richards when they like were, you know, barely starting out and how poor they were and like the apartment that they all lived in just trying to make it as musicians um and then you can see how they all deal with fame i think that's like always the most fascinating part about like a music documentary or a documentary about a famous person is how they deal with fame uh and when i interviewed the filmmaker he was saying like i think whitney houston says it best i don't like fame i like success you know what i mean or it's just like the fame is all the bullshit of of what you actually want. You want success. You want to do what you want, what you love. And can you handle it when it arrives? That's a big question I was asking myself during that documentary. So check it out. Uh, that was a high recommendation. Oh, for man. Me. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. Louise, that sounds sick. Speaking of filmmakers, did you know Robin Williams has a Filipino daughter? Yes, I do. Zelda. Yes, I Who love her. See? Yes amazing she's also in avatars the last airbender sequel called legend of Korra. she's a voice in that yeah she's she's fantastic what? yeah who does she play uh i have to i have to look it up because it's been a second um yeah she's kuvira she's like i'm pretty sure she's kuvira yeah kuvira is one of the baddest villains in the avatar universe uh and she plays kuvira in book four uh phenomenal but like yeah what uh what about zelda besides the fact that she's filipino and awesome <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea that robin williams had like a filipino family at all so that mm -hmm. makes me so, i'm like wow this is they lived I'm in the crazy. bay it makes sense to me <laughs> yeah i mean yeah you're right, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's so uh, so first of all avatar wonderful wonderful series i could watch that series over and over again that's such mm -hmm. a wonderful show but uh lisa frankenstein is coming out yes it is I zombies filipino yeah. director like mm -hmm. what more could you ask for liza sobrano is in that she's mm -hmm. a big filipina actress um you're gonna love that movie ash i watched it last week for uh, i'm doing a junket with katherine newton and cole sprouse who are oh, like the fun. two major stars of it you're gonna love it it's got like the aesthetic of like it's like the 80s i think and like it's horror but it's also so much camp and it's written by Diablo Cody. So if you like Juno or like Jennifer's body, there's like there's like a flavor of that in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. It's just like really cool to see movies like that because it's like so almost out of the box, out of the coffin, if you will. Oh, but, you know. it's electrifying. Oh, oh, oh even better. <laughs> That's even better. Oh, man. Um, yes, it's it's very interesting. I, I did have that thought. I was like, oh, this is like totally Ash's shit right here. Like, oh, you're, man. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I think it comes out in like no or February. It's like something like that soon coming, in the next though. few months. Yeah, totally. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will plus one that as something you got to watch for sure. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the double notes. Yeah. What, what's something else that's on your radar right now? Um, I do want to. I mean. 
there's a movie out right now called May December. Um, oh, it's a it's a Natalie Portman Julianne Moore led film. Uh, it's it's an interesting topic of conversation because it does it does deal with like Mary Kay Letourneau, like a character like that who you know fell in love with her thirteen year old student. You know what I mean? But it takes place twenty years later. The reason I'm bringing it up is because Charles Melton, uh, Asian Asian actor, just gave he's winning a lot of awards right now he's getting accolades because he get, turned in such a beautiful performance i think like yes natalie portman's amazing julianne moore is amazing charles melton's the reason to watch that movie i have oh, to wow. i have to put that out there it's out on netflix uh highly recommend anyone who's uh looking for something to watch it is not an easy watch it's well, a little uncomfortable but it's really well acted i think yeah. Isn't that's... that why we go to the cinema, though, or why we watch movies to make us feel something to invoke something? Yeah, it's always that people forget oh. that when they go. And it's like, oh, I hated that. It was too, too goofy. It's like that was the point to make <laughs> you feel goofy today. Um, yes. But yeah, those th that's like first thing that comes to mind when you ask me. Um, I'm consuming a lot of I'm trying to like catch up on like screeners and stuff like that, you know, like. Personally, I have not seen Oppenheimer. I know that like that's um, <laughs> a big movie this year. I just never got around to it. I literally see the Blu-ray right here. So it's like waiting for me. <laughs> I haven't seen Godzilla minus one, which I heard is like incredible. I'm watching it on Sunday. Like I'm just playing catch up right now. It's been a very, very turbulent time, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of catch up. There's been a lot of movies that have came out lately that we just haven't been able to like talk to me came yeah. out this summer. That was amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Started by like these YouTube people. And then it became this like thriller. Oh, my gosh. So good. Such a good film. I just also Oppenheimer. I just I didn't watch it because I don't want to see white men blow up things. So <laughs> but Barbie was good. Dude, we haven't talked about Barbie. Check this out. Oh, they sent oh. me the screenplay. They sent you the screenplay. It's so cool. Does it, it even have has a golden like, thing? Is it wrapped in gold? <laughs> it's it, it's just a golden cover, but it has like all of this like visual reference too. Wait, I need to find I need to find the page of the monologue because it's so oh. funny. But <laughs> look at it. It's just a full page of monologue from Gloria. I love that. <laughs> but yes, this movie was absolutely incredible probably my favorite of the year uh, i know that sounds dramatic but i think that's legit like i i really really loved it yeah i was not expecting it to be like that deep and existential mm -hmm. and like it really moved me and totally. i was sitting next to the theater with jared my husband and he just he's watching me sob the entire movie i don't know how i'm not even a barbie person i never had a barbie doll but like after i'm like okay i guess i gotta start collecting or something yeah yeah i mean like like ryan gosling gave me sunglasses at oh, yeah. the junket i i keep them near me um but like I don't know. There's so many special things about that movie. Like even the music was like Billie Eilish's song. I don't know. I like learned how to play that on guitar and sing along like immediately after watching it. Um, I, I love that movie because like, yeah, there's some stuff that felt like very heavy handed and lesson giving, but we needed that. I think it's like it came out exactly when it needed to. It, it not only uh, was satirical about like the culture of men and like perception of women but also like was just a good movie like that production design insane the set design was insane and everyone everyone acted their butt off you know like they they like they just believed in whatever their role was and i think that just like it made it so beautiful i love that movie so much amazing <laughs> Like really true commitment from everybody. Just the, the beach scenes and like Will Ferrell. And mm -hmm. there's so many things that you just it's one of those movies that you're like, is this really happening? Am I really oh. watching this right now? And I think that lesson giving that inherent like I'm teaching you a lesson. It's part of the Barbie experience, right? Because when you she's teaching you, essentially, she's a role model in your life. Like she's the one that's teaching you these lessons. So I don't know. I really liked it. And it it stuck with me. I think in a way, like maybe it's a good thing it came out during summer because could you imagine if we were allowed to talk about it at all? Like it'd be <laughs> everywhere. Incessant. Yeah. So, yeah. oh my God. I will but, say though, I had big plans to dress up as 
uh, one of the versions of Ken for Halloween. I did not get to do it. I'll no. save it for another time. Uh, we did. I did make my my holiday family birthday or not birthday card. My family Christmas card this year. I did make it Barbie themed. Wait, yeah. can I see it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So people who are listening, it's it's the Sharmas and they're in the little pink convertible car and it's right in front of Barbie's house. That's so cute. And I have my, my dad doing family. a beach off up there. And then this is us doing the dance number in black shirts. Like, yeah, when I visited Thanksgiving, every year my mom kind of anticipates that I do a Christmas card. I started it when I was like really young, just as a fun project. And now it's like an expectation every year. Uh, last year, I did an everything everywhere were all at once one. Oh, and then yeah. this year I was like, what am I going to do? And I was like, idiot Barbie. <laughs> of course, Barbie. So you, the unedited photos are so funny because I like oh. just posed my my family in any which way. And and they they always just anticipate, like, what is the final product going to look like? So <laughs> I was happy to do it. It was either that or or the uh, the heiress tour. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't watch that. I know Taylor Swift has a big uh, fan community. I did not get to to see the movie. Did you watch it? Are you big Taylor? Are you a Swifty? I'm not a Swifty, but I am a Beyonce gal. And I ah, didn't watch that queen. movie immediately. Yes, yeah. I am part of the Beehive. The Beehive. I heard the movie was incredible. I mean, it has I like 100 yeah. percent on Rotten Tomatoes, right? Mm-hmm. Like, 100 on both on both uh, both critic sides. But man, I need to I need to watch that. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of um, Halloween costumes, so I turned 30 in October. Woo woo. Um, and one. I wanted to do like 30 flirty and thriving, 13 mm. going on 30 kind of situation. Couldn't do any of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's, I mean, like for those who don't know, even during, so the SAG strike overlapped on Halloween, we couldn't even dress in costumes because that's technically supporting the AMPTP and supporting like movies and these characters. Also, really, really interesting conversation with with that kind of thing. Like so many of our cult classic movies have inspired these costumes or these, you know, Halloween outfits and everything. And so many aspects of what we celebrate in our daily lives and decor or whatever it may be. Do the costume designers that have originated those costumes, do they get any profit on these like Beetlejuice designed like outfit. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm just so curious about probably that. Probably not. I, I Which can't is horrible. Imagine. So yeah, yeah. That is that is a great point. Don't don't start another strike, Ash. Oh no. But but a but a great point to make. Everyone should be getting paid properly. No, no, that's a that's a good point though. Like you think of people like like Anthony Francisco, he made baby Groot, right? Like he drew the baby Groot design. And then Disney gets to market that, sell toys for that. But Anthony just was the brain behind it. You know, like he doesn't get to reap the benefits of of that, that like, you know, them marketing that and selling those products. At least that's how I imagine it. I would imagine it's the same for costume designers. So like, you're right. Like if people are walking around dressed as Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice, you know, and, and like the costume designer is like, hey, that was my idea. Like, I wonder how that feels. But oh, man, it would drive me crazy. Great point. Um, but it is Christmas time. It's holiday season. I love I love this time of year. The air is colder. Colors usually get brighter. Ash, you're wearing red right now, which makes me feel more festive. Um, I I love this time of year. Uh, what are some of your favorite kind of like Christmas movies that you you got to watch every year? Do you have any before Christmas? No, oh, great one, great one. I'm the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Allen, despite Tim my Alan. thoughts on, on Tim Allen, um, and Elf. Those are like oh, two yeah. must watches for me. Elf is year. definitely. I've I've like actually been really liking watching cheesy romantic Christmas Ooh. movies. And our our friend from Filipino actress Barcada, Nikki McKenzie, I think is her last name. Mm-hmm. She's in like two of them this year. I yeah, love it yeah. though. Just like feel good. Uh, what's the one with Jimmy O Yang that came out last year? Oh, and yeah, Darren yeah. Barnett. The catfish one. I yeah, the catfish remember. one. Falling. I don't know. It's one on Netflix. Falling in love with you. I don't know. I could yeah. butcher that name. Also, but just like former mm. Tremendous Talk guest Rachel Laco is yes. also in. Yes. Uh, uh, a, a, a kind of a holiday Christmassy. I think she plays like 
the evil girlfriend <laughs> like the I wife. love that like I the, love that not the other woman the main the, the the original girlfriend or whatever so that's really fun I will say this though um AMC is doing a deal all of December Elf Christmas Vacation Polar Express and the animated Grinch movie are all playing in the theater all all month for only five bucks that's so, a great deal dude it has an awesome deal AMC and then for sponsor one week, us I know. Please, please. <laughs> um, and for one week, they're also playing Die Hard in theaters. So it's, oh. uh, it's festive over at AMC theaters, you guys. I, I highly recommend checking it out. But I have to say this. I watched Timothy Chalamet's Wonka movie. Go see it during the holidays. Really? It is. I I know. I know what you're feeling. I felt the same way going in. I was like, <laughs> Okay, I'll watch this movie. It ended up being one of my favorite movies this year. And I I know that sounds dramatic. It sounds extreme. It is so damn charming and whimsical. And it's like magic. And I I, I don't know. Like, I can't even say that like Timothy Chalamet's performance is what it made it feel that way. It's just the movie as a whole. I don't know if you guys watch the Paddington movies, but Paul King Paul King can't miss like Paddington two is one of the best movies. I like, like it's so good. Wonka has that quality to it. Wonka has that magic, that wholesomeness, that whimsy. It, it totally nailed it for me. Um, and so that's my, that's my last recommendation to you at the end of the year. Try to see Wonka when you can. I, I love Willy Wonka. I love Willy Wonka and chocolate factory. The, the 1971 film, Gene Wilder. That's like one of my all times, uh, even the the Johnny Depp version in 20, 2005 or whatever it was. I like that one, too, quite a bit. This one is something different from both of them and yet honors at least the 71 version. It's a much younger Willy Wonka, a lot more optimism. But like, damn, did I need that movie? Damn, did I need it? I just needed that hope and that optimism at the end of the year. It's a it's a perfect holiday film. Like that's a, that, and that like I know that sounds like I'm a shill for WB. I am not. This is like my genuine reaction. I had the lowest expectation. I I did not buy the Timothy Chalamet casting as Willy Wonka. And then I I was in the theater. I I cried. I laughed out loud. And the music, it's a musical. They're not marketing it as such. If the music is great, I don't know why they're not like leaning into that. But please, that's. That's me. That's what I got to say today. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Didn't see that coming. It's it's a, such a surprise. I'll say that. Wow. Right now. Yeah. I got to admit, I don't have high expectations for that movie, but I I still don't. And yeah. I'm excited to go watch it. And I'm excited to be proven wrong. Yeah. I, ho- I hope I hope you are proven wrong. I hope you enjoy it like I did, because. Aww. Like I said, I did not. Ex- I was not in my bingo card. Like I was like voting for <laughs> awards at the end of the year. And I was like, I haven't seen Wonka. I guess I get I guess I, I, I guess I better like watch it, you know, and like I'm so glad I did before I started submitting stuff because I was like, OK, hold on. There's some Whoa. really cute production design and music. And it's just man, there are some sequences that just feel like I'm a kid. It's like. <laughs> I don't know. I it felt very magical to me. Okay, I have to watch it, and I have to watch it in a movie theater. Yeah, I think it's. I think that's such a key to it too, because it sounded good and it looked. I saw it in IMAX too, so Ooh, I was just like, you're you know, in it. You're in fully the film. immersed. Fully immersed. Yeah. Oh man, IMAX does make a difference, though. I gotta admit, like it does. Yeah. I yeah. I remember those days for so many years. I would just watch movies on my phone, just mm-hmm. on my phone, on this tiny little. It used to be smaller, smaller yep. screen. And then the difference between that and like the full IMAX experience and being like actually able to enjoy the filmmakers work. Yeah, that was like how I felt about Disney's Wish. Brand new. Oh, animated I haven't movie. seen it yet. That was the thing. It was like you watch the trailer on your computer or your phone and you're like, oh, cute. But when you see it in theaters, then you see the art style, you know, like like the visuals are so much grander. It sounds great. Um, I got to watch Ariana DeBose perform like so close she performed this wish for us in like a very intimate setting 
what a gracious person like and she's her, her the music in that movie is great another great family film i know it didn't do super well in the box office um it's a weird time not a lot of people are still going to the movies but hopefully there's a shift happening it's a we're going through some changes <laughs> yeah some changes but i do want to recommend one more whimsical family friendly like gave me it's it's a musical movie it's on netflix called jingle jangle and i mm. didn't expect i kind of just wanted to put some you know like christmas movie on i just kind of picked it random this is so the music in it is so fun it gave me willy wonka vibes so that's why i wanted to mention mm. it too like things are floating in the air and i don't know it's just a, a good movie it sounds familiar is it an all-black cast yeah yeah okay yeah yeah yeah. Uh, i think it was probably like last year it came out it had a lot of great so. great buzz around it yeah definitely i have never seen it so maybe that's something i can watch with my family this year it's just yeah. so cute and it made me want to like go around and build something or like the songs <laughs> oh you're gonna love the soundtrack it's so good the soundtrack is is amazing it's like I broadway it. i okay here's the thing we've seen movie broadway play broadway book whatever it is this is totally like if it doesn't turn into a Broadway show, I would be very mm, surprised or some yeah. sort of like musical theater adaptation. Listen, Beetlejuice got one. And exactly. <laughs> why not? Why not? Jingle Jangle. It already sounds like a Broadway play. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, those are some of the um, my all the recommendations I could think of right now. But oh wait, what do you do? Like, what's a tradition you have during the holiday season? Mm, it's 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 hard. Um, ever since I I moved away, um, it's it's definitely been you know kind of just like either I go home or my parents come here. Um, the the only real tradition that we have is that we spend the day together in some way. You know what I mean? And usually it's a Christmas Eve at midnight. We'll open presents, kind of thing. Um, but you know as you get older, the presents get lesser, you know what I mean? Like there's not as many, it's not as big of a thing. So really, as long as we can get like a, a meal in together or a couple meals or some kind of quality time, that's like the only thing that is a must with our family. And I, I like watching movies with my family. So it's just, you know, it's, it's hard to get us all together in the same room, but we, it, that's, that's basically it. What about you? What does your Christmas look like? Oh, I love that though. Yeah. I, it's so interesting how food just brings us together, right? Like we don't mm -hmm. have to trade gifts. We don't have to do anything. I just want to sit and eat food with you or yeah. cook food for you. But um, I have recently, so I got married in the past few years. My, I come from a very, very small family, just me, my mom, my dad. My husband has 20 plus people oh. <laughs> immediately all the time show up like every weekend that we want to, right? So what I started doing is there's a bunch of, and all my friends are having kids and stuff. So what I like to do is hold um Christmas ornament decorating parties. So oh, I get- Oh, that's a, so cute. It's very cute, especially with like the tiny babies and stuff. So oh. we'll put the baby's hands on like paint and put them on the ornaments that's and so all sweet. the couples get to like make their own ornaments and people get really creative. Like last year we made a bunch of Star Wars ones and of oh. course all mine are like Disney themed and stuff. All a lot of Nightmare Before Christmas themed ornaments. But um, I hope to keep that tradition going for quite some time because it just it makes me happy. And then even with adults too, like the adults get in on it. They're making ornaments for their dogs and stuff. It's really cute. I think that's really cute. And and Definitely, I would encourage you to keep it going. I got to be at my God family's house during Thanksgiving, and they were putting up the tree. And our the little one, she's only five. Her name is Christine. She was hanging up an ornament, and on that ornament was my God brother. He's the same age as me. We like grew up. It's closest thing I have to a brother. Um, and he was. She was hanging up his ornament that he made when she, he was five years old, going to the same school that she was going to, where they still make those ornaments so just to be like hey 25 plus years in the past i made something like, like this and now my little five-year-old niece is putting it up and she has one of her own and then in maybe 30 years time she'll look back and be like oh my gosh like you know like everyone has like this like kindergarten version of this ornament you know i i think stuff like that is so invaluable to like tradition and just like the feeling of family that stuff is like they're like artifacts, artifacts of your history, artifacts of like the love that you're surrounded with at the time. De I definitely love stuff like that. I wish I wish um, I wish we did more stuff like that personally in my my life. But when it comes to tree decorating, my mom's like this year I have a theme 
And then she'll like do like this year is blue. This year is purple, you know, and then she'll like she'll she'll design it. Ever since I left the house, it's been come her tree, her tradition. <laughs> so, you know, I'll take it. Uh, less work for me. <laughs> her tree edition. Tree Oh, you're hitting it with, with the puns today. Usually it's me making the stupid puns. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. Like we said, we're restructuring everyone. <laughs> Brand new tremendous talk. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's that's all I got for you. The, the well, I got this too, episode. man. It's been nice well, chatting with you, though. I'll it say has. That. It has. I I look at podcasts that I kind of enjoy, and like I just kind of sit alone all day. You know, I work from my desk. I'm mm-hmm. I'm alone the whole day long, and if I just listen to people talking, I don't know. It makes me feel like I'm not alone. So I yeah. hope we do that for at least one person with all the weird stuff we talk about. Yeah, totally. I, I think that's those are the best podcasts, especially in this kind of sense. It's like the like when you feel like you have you're like with your buddies, you know, as parasocial as that sound, uh it, it does help. Especially since like in our I don't know about you, but or I kind of know about you, but like when you do talk to people, it's like something needs to happen or there's like a task that needs to get done. So it's not just like we're just hanging around and, and chatting. It's just like it's work, it's constant. So for even for us, this is like a great time to just like, you know what I mean? Like, just like take a second to breathe. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that you guys joined us. We'll be coming back in full force sometime in the next year. But I definitely look out for those next two episodes with Crit and Vinny. Uh, very excited to release those. And uh, yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more of us. And I hope. I hope Yay. you come back. Yeah. Thank you and happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. And remember, you're tremendous. <laughs> you are tremendous. Woo! All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh, and Filipino paroles. I want to do that. Oh, yes. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> The Tremendous Talk Podcast is produced by Lawrence Sharma, Ashley Rapuano Sanchez, Gabriela David, Joseph Corralde, and Jeremiah Abraham in collaboration with Tremendous. The Tremendous Talk Podcast jingle is by Jared Sanchez and Ashley Rapuano Sanchez, produced at Hamsterdam Records.